Let's go ahead and see what happens if we try to reload. So now if I hit play, and I hit R, nothing happens. That's not good. There's the reason for that, I think, is because we don't have enough bullets. So let's increase the number of bullets. And now I think that if we hit play, we'll be able to at least start to reload. I don't think we'll be able to complete the reload. So now if I, yep, so now we've hit it. Oh, cool, okay. That worked better than I thought it would. But let's go ahead and go to this reload section. And I don't want to wait on any events because I want it to reload instantly by using a duration. It will then use an event. So, or I, I don't want it to wait on any animation events. I just want it to use a standard event. And then actually when we go back to that, we'll say that it will be done reloading after 1.1 seconds. So now when I hit play, we should, we should be able to completely, yeah. So now, now when I hit reload and it, now it works well. All right, cool. The last thing is that when, when I'm running, it knows that the, the bobbing doesn't look too good. Just actually just in general, it doesn't. We need to adjust that a little bit. And we can do that under the spring system settings. And actually, let, let's go ahead and increase the look sway a bit so that it's a little bit more loose when I'm looking around. Actually, 900 is too big of a value, so let's do 90. And then when he is bobbing, we'll have him, we'll have him bob a little bit quicker by changing the rate. And we'll also increase the amplitude of the rotational bob to 550, just so that we'll get a little bit more of an extreme bob when he's, when he's walking around. So it looks pretty good. But running, running still doesn't look that good. So what we can do is use the state system to create a new state for when he's running. And this is actually a really neat system that makes things extremely easy to set up when, or extremely easy adjust to for changes. And basically when the run is active, this state will be activated and then it will change any of these parameters. So let's go ahead and adjust a few of these parameters just so that we can get an idea of what it's doing. I want to change the position offset so that it moves the weapon down a little bit. Uh, and so I'm going to do a value of 0 0.032. I want it to rotate some when he's running. So he should be kind of holding the weapon down. And we'll do that by applying an X rotation of 10. And then we will adjust the, let's say, the look sway. So it's even more of a look sway when he's running. So and then we'll do one more thing. We'll adjust the positional rate so that he... It bounces a little bit more, and this is generally pretty good if you do the X is, or the Y is multiplied by two of the X. And then we'll change the rotational rate as well to match. And then let's, just for fun, let's go ahead and change the amplitude to be a little bit bigger number so we'll get a little bit more of an extreme rotation. So now when he runs, it should look a little bit better. It should be should tilt down. So we're walking right now, now when it's running, and it doesn't look like it activated at all. And the reason for that is because the run state wasn't actually activated. So UFPS has this thing called abilities, and one of the abilities that it can run is speed change, which will change the speed. And you can set which state should run. So I'm going to put run for the state, since that was a state name that I called it. And now if I go ahead and hit play, now it should actually work. Looks like I have a completely wrong position, but it did at least get activated, so that's a good sign. So what's uh, what's the position that I'm using here? Point, point zero two, or point two nine. All right, so I was off by 10. All right, so now let's go ahead and hit play. There we go. Now it looks like he's he, now he's running. 
All right, cool. But yeah, actually to go back to one of the one of the things we brought over from third person controller one was this ability system and it basically allows you to add new functionality to the character without having to change any of the core script. So basically all this all these abilities and then there's a bunch more, all these abilities were added without changing any of the core scripts and it's just kind of their own independent script. So it makes adding new functionality extremely easy. So I think we have the basics now. And one thing that we don't have yet is a moving platform. So let's go ahead and go to the train. And this is the train that will be moving. And in order to get the character moving on the train, it's actually pretty easy because all we have to do is change this layer to moving platform. So UFPS will recognize that it's the correct moving platform. And then we also have to change, or we don't want to add moving platform. We want to add animator update so that UFPS will know when to update it. Since UFPS is a deterministic character controller, it needs to know exactly when things happen. So now when I go ahead and hit play and then I get on the train, everything will work correctly. I know we didn't see it not working correctly, but trust me that it didn't work. And then as soon as this activates, which it looks like the train is coming in now, the doors will open and then I'll be able to get on. And because of the two changes that I just made, when the moving platform starts moving again, UFPS will work with it. And UFPS, because of its deterministic character controller, it has a custom collision detection system and you can do some really neat things with it. It has a dynamic gravity system. So you could actually have a moving platform that rotates in a th uh, on all three axes and UFPS would follow on with the character. In the main UFPS demo system, there's a couple of planets that you can run around. And so yeah, right now we're on the moving platform and this train just goes into a dark hole. So we're not going to be able to continue, but that's just an example of using the moving platform. So the last thing that I'm going to do is take the behavior designer integration and apply it to a UFPS character so that UFPS character can move around using behavior trees. I've already copied all the objects and the only reason why I did that is just so that it was quicker in terms of positioning. Beyond that, everything else here is the exact same as what's included in the behavior designer integration. So if I go ahead and click on the behavior designer integration agent, the UFPS agent, I'll be able to see the behavior tree in behavior designer. And these behavior trees are just a really good visual way of seeing what your AI is doing. And this, I've worked with some pretty complex behavior trees before, and I would not want to do it without a visual editor. It just makes things so much easier to see things visually how they're executing. So actually, let me go ahead and hit play, and then we'll be able to see behavior designer in action. We'll be able to see the tasks light up green when they're active, and then there's different statuses to go along with those tasks. So I'm going to close that, and we'll see that one of the tasks that are currently active right now is this agent is patrolling around the map. As soon as he sees the character, he'll start firing at me. And then you can't really tell that he was firing at me because there was no UI. So actually, let's go ahead and quickly add some UI. And I can do that again through this main editor under the scene setup part, and then click Add UI. There's some UI here that we don't want to use, so I'm going to just delete it. And now when we hit play, we should be able to see visually that the behavior tree agent is firing at me. So, so he'll start patrolling to the next waypoint. And when he starts to see me, he'll start firing at me. This behavior tree is actually pretty complex in that he can search for objects. He'll, he'll start firing at me if he sees me, if I attack him, if, if he hears me, if he... Um, yeah, so he'll, he'll also, I guess, go get ammo, go get health, and it, it's actually pretty cool how it works. So that was a pretty brief introduction of UOPS, even though it was 20 or 30 minutes on, but we covered a lot of ground, and I'm really excited to see where everybody takes this asset. We've been working really hard on it, and we're, we're excited that it's finally released. So, so yeah, thank you.